Welcome to the Way of the Millennial podcast, where we discuss topics that feature everyday life in hopes to empower and inspire you one podcast at a time. I'm your host, Tamia Lester. Welcome, everyone. As you all know, we are entering into fall. Fall actually started in September, but the season has changed. We can feel it in the air. You guys, I was in North Alabama yesterday, and it was cold. It was so, so cold. It's time to bring out the jackets. I didn't have a jacket, but I had a long sleeve on. But it's time to bring out the jackets. It's time to bring out the scarves, the boots, whatever it takes to get you warm in this weather. It is time to bring it out. Don't get me wrong. I love fall. I do. I love winter, too. And fall is beautiful. It really is. So... That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about walking into a new season. It's your winning season. Claim it. You're winning this year, right? And just as, you know, summer is beautiful, you see the flowers, they're blooming. And some of you may have taken losses this year. But let me tell you something about the beauty of fall. Trees, they lose their leaves. What else? They lose their color. They start changing to yellow and orange and brown, you know, and eventually they fade off. But guess what? Fall is still beautiful. So we're going to talk about taking those losses and we're going to transform those into something beautiful. So when you walk into this new season, you can walk into it very hopeful and believing that whatever God has planned for you will manifest. Whatever he wants to happen in your life will manifest. The good things, right? We're speaking good things. We're speaking positivity. That's what we want in our life. This is for you. If you have suffered any loss, I'm telling you, this season is for you. But first, I want to talk to my young people, especially the ones that are like seniors this year. And I know things can be scary. Things can be tough right now. You're trying to figure out who am I? Like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go to college? Or do I even want to go to college? All those questions, all those thoughts are normal. I promise you, I was there, you know, um, there was a time where I was like, well, I want to do this, but I don't want to do, do, I want to do this. And I'm thinking about what my friends are doing. Do I want to go to this school because my friends are going, all of that is pretty normal. All of it. I promise it is. But I do want to give some encouraging words to just keep pushing. If you're a senior, keep going hard. Like this is a very important year for you, What whether you're going to college or not. Do your work to the best of your ability so that you can get a job if you're not going to college. And if you are going to college, that you will be able to get accepted. And if you don't know what you want to do in college, still go and take your basic classes. That way, by the time you're finished that first year and you're getting to know who you are, you're getting to know your likes and your interests and you're meeting all these different types of people who, you know, that's one thing about, you know, college and universities is you have so many people that go to a school from all over the world. And it gives you the opportunity to just come and contact and learn new things from other cultures. And you might find yourself just by doing that. When it comes to relationships, my young people who are in relationships, if you're in a relationship and you're in high school, that person might or may not be for you. So if there comes a time where you have to remove yourself, you have to break up, you know, have hope that whoever God is planned for you will come into your life, you know. Also, going into college is is scary, you know, being scared, but love yourself. I think that's very important when you are going into college because you have all these temptations on trying to fit in with society or fit into the crowd, you know, and if you do not love who you truly are, you don't want to be influenced into being something that you're not, right? And a lot of young people do that who are very impressionable and don't truly know themselves yet. So it's okay to be alone. It's okay to take time out to go to the library, go get some ice cream, go watch it, go play a video game, go whatever it takes, go to the park, go work out, whatever it takes, read a book it takes to learn you and love you. Whatever it is that you love, you do that. Fill yourself with things that make you happy as long as you are not hurting anyone else, nor are you hurting yourself, right? 
because that is very important, especially as a young person. I've made mistakes in the past where I was just trying to please friends and reality or family or just, just trying to be a people pleaser, you know, at one point. And that doesn't do anything but please those people but hurt you. So please love yourself. And I promise when you get to that point of loving yourself, like I have, you will have to say no to things that people that you used to say no to, or that people used to push you to do. And you might have to separate yourself from certain people because you love yourself so much and you know what you love and what you don't, you know? And to my young adults, like between the ages of like 20, 30, especially my new parents, like this is for you, like walking into your new season. I know being a new parent may be hard. You know, if you're a mom, those sleepless nights, you know, the baby crying, or maybe you have a sick baby, or maybe you have a baby that has, um, health issues, you know, or, you know, medical issues. It's okay. It's okay. I promise you, you are not alone. You are not alone. Keep going. You give that baby all the love that you can, all the support that you can, I promise you. But do not forget to take time out to love yourself, mom, or to love yourself, dad. There are some single dads out there, and there are some new dads out there who don't know what they're doing right now. You know, they have a new baby or a new kid, and they're just like, you know, I'm just winging it. Dad, you're not alone. There's so many millions of dads out here that has never done this before either. And if you've had it, if your dad was present, then and he was a good man, go to him. Talk to him about it. Don't be afraid to talk to your father about being a father to your son. And if your father was not there, you know, talk to a male figure you know. And if you don't have that, you think about what you wanted in a father. You think of the the memories that you wanted to make with your father, whether it's going fishing, whether it's going to see a basketball game, or whether it's just wrestling in the living room, hugging, kissing your daughter or your son, whatever it takes. It is okay to have those nights. I promise you, I have a five-year-old and I have a one-year-old. And when I had my five-year-old, that was very new. I was younger and I was, it was, came as a surprise to me. I was not expecting to have my son. And I went through things that most new parents go through, just being scared and just being afraid that your life is over. Your life is not over. I promise you. That is a lie that people tell. Really, that's a lie from Satan that your life is over when you have kids. Because in reality, Satan does not want you to have children. He does not want God's promise to be fulfilled. So, you know, don't believe any of that when people say that your life is over. Your life is not over. In reality, your life has just began. Now you have a purpose. Now you have someone who is looking at you and who is watching you and who depends on you. And it sounds scary, but use it as motivation. You are, mom, you are someone's super woman. Dad, you are someone's superhero. You're someone's super dad. Someone is looking to you. You're someone's hero. Look at that. When new parents, look at yourself as your child's hero. What, what do heroes do? They save their kids. They make their kids happy. Well, not their kids, but heroes, they they save the world. You know, they're there when the people need them. So be the same towards your child. Love your child. Talk to your child. Even if you have a newborn, when I had my, both of my newborn, both of my boys, when they were newborns, I spoke to them. Like, I told them, you're handsome, you're intelligent, you're kind, you're compassionate, you're loving. You know, I spoke positive things into them. Mom, dad. These times are tough. Speak kind to yourself. Treat yourself nice. Love yourself while you're loving your child. Be gentle to yourself. Speak kind to yourself. Go look in the mirror and say, Dad, look at yourself, Dad, and look in the mirror and say, you're doing the best you can. Times get hard, but don't give up. Mom, go in the mirror with your baby. Look at yourself and say, Mom, you've got this. You can do this. Keep pushing. I'm tired, yes, but we're going to keep going because one day I won't be tired anymore. One day I'm going to have this down pat. One day I'm going to be able to wing it and I can help another mother who is going to need my help. Just stay hopeful. Stay focused. Um, Be optimistic. Be positive. That's one thing, especially going into this new season. Anything. Those who are having, like, career changes, you know, like, 
that's pretty scary. I've done that too. You know, I've had to change my career into a different path. Just have faith. Like there's a reason that God allowed you to have your career change. You know, your path changes. Stay focused. Learn everything that you can so that you can do everything to the best of your ability. No one is ever too smart to gain knowledge. No one on this earth. The times times are changing. Things are advancing. Technology is advancing. Science is advancing. Everything is advancing. You're always going to have to learn something new. So do not ever feel like, oh, I don't know enough. Or maybe my coworker knows more than me. Hey, they may know more than you, but guess what? Someone knows more than them too, okay? And you have, maybe sometimes you have to start at the entry level to get to where you want to be. Trust the process. It's a journey, okay? There's an end goal. And sometimes you have to go over hurdles to get to where you want to be. Um, for those who are still in their career path, Yes, this is a new season for you. So we're claiming that you get that breakthrough that you wanted. If you're an artist and you've been working hard and putting out songs or producing music, you speak that this is your breakthrough. This is, this is the season that you're going to get that turnaround. This is the season where you get that show, you get that live show, or you get the ratings that you want, or you get the purchases of music that you want. My authors, my book, my writers, um, my athletes, um, people that are working in the medical field, people that are working in education, engineering, whatever field it may be, this is your season. Be optimistic about where you are and just see that there's something positive about to happen because anytime we focus on the positive and we're very optimistic, it's almost like God gives it to you and it just falls right in your lap. But if you're constantly negative and you're focusing on what you don't have, it's hard to move forward and build, you know, it is like, I, I've been there before where I just used to focus on the negative and what I don't have, what I don't have, you know, that was long, long, long time ago, of course, because I was young, but you know, someone had to talk, tell me the same thing. Like, don't focus on the negative Mia. Like focus on the positive, focus on what you do have. Be grateful. That's how you can start your day off. Be grateful for your job. Be grateful for the career that you already have. Be grateful for the numbers that you have and you receive right now. So as long as you're optimistic, the blessings are going to come. They're going to come and come and come. Anytime you have a negative lens, negative glasses, when looking at yourself or the world, you will not see the positive things. There's beauty in gratitude. There's beauty in thankfulness. There's beauty in saying and seeing the good that's in your life. And for my people that like lost a loved one or like lost a family member or lost a friend this year, there was so many people that, you know, lost lives this year and last year, you know, grief is really tricky. You know, even if you're still grieving over someone from years ago, like grief is really tricky. One minute you think like, oh, I'm good. And then the next minute it's, you think about them and you just break down, you know, one thing I can say to those who are still grieving over people. Think about those positive memories, you know, everyone, everything has a season, everything is born and it also dies. That's just facts. You know, nothing really lives forever anymore, you know? So knowing that, knowing that one day time is going to end, knowing one day your life is going to end, knowing one day everyone's life is going to end. And that's a fact. Take in the emotion. Yes, you're sad. Yes, it hurts so bad to to know that this person is gone. But think about how they lived their life, you know? Did they accomplish everything they accomplished, you know? Did they, was their time up? Are they suffering anymore? Are they in any more pain? Be grateful and, and hold on to those positive memories, even though you won't see them anymore. Because one day, you're going to be gone and you're going to have family that miss you so much. So just stay positive, do things that, you know, uplift your spirit. And honestly, those people that we lost, they would hurt seeing us hurt over them passing. You know, most people you talk to will say, you know, don't, don't please don't cry when I'm gone. Like I love you. You know, they give us that speech and it's so easy to hear that, but it's like when reality kicks in, it's like, how can I just not be sad? You're gone. There's nothing wrong with being sad, but don't let that sadness take over your whole entire life to the point you 
engage in activities that are not healthy because you're trying to cope with grieving or you're being angry at the world because you're not properly coping with that loss, you know. And there's that's how life is. We lose and we win, you know. And one thing I have learned is that people will people leave this earth, you know. And one day we have to finally tell ourselves like they're gone. They are gone and there's nothing else that I can do about it. And in their memory and for their legacy, I'm going to keep their name alive. I'm going to remember the good and I'm going to continue making them happy. Because if I sit in pity for years or months or just time and time again, the legacy, you know, you're not, you got to keep the name alive. You got to keep them alive. You have to make them proud, represent them well. That person who was not here anymore, you Go hard in representing them well. If 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 it was your grandmother, hey, I'm my grandmother's child and I'm going to represent her well because her kids, 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 you know, her great-grandchildren or her grandchildren, they're all watching. You're a product of their, or if it's a friend, if you have a friend that was close to you that passed away because, you know, these young people are leaving. And even if you're not young, if you're an older person, you're 40, 50, 60, 70, and you have a friend that passed away, keep their name alive. Remember the positive memories, but also represent them as their friend. You represent them well. You let their name live on forever and you represent them well. And to that person that's trying to find themselves right now in this new season, you know, Everyone talks about finding yourself, but they never talk about the hard work that it takes to find yourself. Sometimes finding yourself means to isolate yourself and figure out what you like, figure out what triggers you, figure out what hurts you, you know, when you when it comes to finding yourself. One way I found myself was getting it reading my Bible, learning more about God and figuring out you know, my purpose on this earth. My purpose is to bring more people closer to him, right? So in order to do that, I have to learn about the man who I believe in or the God that I believe in, learn more about him, his love. And because I I know more about his love, I'm able to give that to everyone else around me, right? The more I learn about my assignment, my purpose in life, I'm able to just pour that into other people. My purpose is to inspire. My purpose is to empower, right? So everywhere I go, that's what I do, right? That's, that's, that's me. I found myself. I know what my duty is to do. And I love doing that. And I do that in anything, whether it's serving, giving, whether it's talking to someone, whether it's giving an encouraging word, whether it's being patient with someone while they're trying to figure out who they is, whether it's praying for someone, Find yourself, figure out what you like to do. You know, sometimes you got to just be all about you, protect your energy, protect your spirit, protect your aura, protect things that are around you in order to find yourself. And I had to do that. You know, I had to build, um, I had to have boundaries. I had to break bridge, you know, burn bridges with people, because I was finding me and I realized those people were not good for me. You know, you can love people and realize, you know, you're not for me and that's okay. No love lost, but I'm going to let you live your life over there because I know who I am. I know what I like. I know what I deserve and I'm going to, I'm going to continue walking in my destiny because I know who I am. But when you don't know who you are, you allow anybody to come into your life, come into your life. You allow anybody to say whatever you just allow. And when I mean, say whatever, I mean, be able to treat you any kind of way and say whatever and not having any boundaries. When you truly don't know yourself, you allow a lot of things to slide. You don't put your foot down and you can put your foot down in a very respectful, honest way. You know, you let people know what you will not tolerate and what you will not allow in your life. And if they choose to do that, you remove yourself because we cannot control what people do. We can only control ourselves. That's why it's important to love yourself, find yourself and know yourself so that when it comes to relationships, Let's say you're in a relationship, you're a woman, you're in a relationship with a man, you're a man, you're in a relationship with a woman, and you're, you're, or 
you, or you're a girl in a relationship with a girl, you're a guy in, in a relationship with a guy, whatever the case may be, who you're in a relationship with. If you don't truly know who you are and love who you are, you will tolerate things that you are not supposed to tolerate. Because you ever had that friend that's like, oh no, don't be with him. He did this to you, did this to you, but they're dealing with the same thing and they're allowing this. They don't truly, they they haven't found themselves and they aren't truly um, stepping into who they are and loving themselves truly. And I think, I honestly, 2022 has shown me was really like a big eye opener and and telling myself like Mia like you're allowing some things to slide that you normally would not allow you know because after you know losing the loss of my mother she was basically like that person who was like my um I got my reassurance from is my mom. That's who I got my reassurance from. Not a man, not a bestie, not a cousin, not a coworker. It was always my mom. So if my mom said I was beautiful, I was beautiful. If my mom said I was talented, I was talented. If my mom said I could do it, I believed I could do it. And without her here, you know, I didn't have that little voice in my head anymore. So it was like, whoa, like now I got to, I got to talk to myself, you know, I don't have any, that person that I run to anymore. And I allowed a lot of things to slide that I normally would not have if she was here. That's why it's important to find yourself. Don't wait till you lose someone to find yourself. Do it now, you know, do it now. And don't make the mistake of getting reassurance from mom or dad or sister or brother. That that's that's not good. We don't want to get reassurance from people. We want to know when you look in that mirror, you know you're beautiful. When you look in that mirror, man, you know you're handsome, right? When you you don't need reassurance from anyone. You know you're intelligent. You know you're smart. You know you can accomplish those these things. You know yourself. When you get to the point of knowing yourself, you dictate what you allow in your life. You have a boyfriend or a girlfriend who is not respecting your boundaries, who wants to go cheat or who wants to, you know, be disrespectful, who wants to put their hands on you, who wants to gossip, who wants to lie to you. You know yourself. You know you don't allow that. You will not allow that. You will remove yourself from that relationship. You will not sit and tolerate or depending on the relationship, depending on what the other partner do, you will communicate your needs. And if your needs are not met or they're not respecting your needs or respecting you, you know what you need to do. But sometimes when we have not truly found ourselves, when we have not truly loved ourselves, we allow people to come into our lives and to constantly hurt us and to constantly put us down to the point we can't even look at ourselves and recognize ourselves in the mirror anymore. And it's okay. We've all been there. We've all been there. We have allowed expectations from other people, society, family, friends, whoever, to dictate who we are, dictate what we like, dictate what we dress like, you know, how we get our makeup done, how what shoes we wear. That stops here. Not We're not walking into our winning season like that, okay? We're walking into our winning season, loving us, finding us, knowing what we want, tolerating what we choose to tolerate, right? Because it's about you. And if you are a parent, you have children that are watching you. If you don't have a parent, God is watching you. Your friends are watching you. Your family's watching you. Your coworkers are watching you. And sometimes it takes a lot of courage to make that step and to make the necessary um, arrangements in your life to get to that point. But I just hope and pray that you love yourself enough to do those, um, changes or arrangements. Also walking into this new season, it's important to surround yourself with supportive people, supportive friends, supportive family, especially if this is going, if you claim in a winning season, if you're claiming a winning season, you know, you're winning. You remove yourself from those naysayers. Remove those yourself from those who do not believe in you, those who are doubting you, those who do not support you, right? Because though they may not say it out their mouth, like, I support you, sometimes doesn't mean that they don't, but sometimes what they don't do is a reason of, to remove them, right? Like, there are some people in my life that I know love me, 
you know, and they care about me and they want to see me happy, but they don't necessarily support what I'm doing. They don't necessarily support my dream. And if God gives you a dream, you sometimes we can't expect other people to see that. He didn't give it to them. He didn't give them that dream. He didn't give them the the ambition to do certain things. If you if you want to sing, if you want to use your voice to rap or to sing, and that's how you get your emotions out, emotions out, and that's how you change the world. Not everybody might not everyone is going to be okay with that because it's not their destiny. It's not their dream. Um, if you want to wrestle, if you want to play basketball, if you want to play football, it may, may you might not have your family that agree with it. They might not agree, but it's okay. It's not their destiny. They was not given that dream. It's yours to chase. It's yours to go after. And those who do not support you, you leave them where they at. You leave them where they are. Excuse me. You leave them right where they are you can still love people and leave them where they are and when I say where they are you don't have to like cut them off but you just you have to it's more of a mind thing you have to tell yourself I know this person does not support me so I'm not going to have a mental attachment to them in my life just in case I get to a point in my life and they just fall away they fall off they just break off the relationship does not end you know we have friends in our life who are low-key haters who can be jealous you don't want to see you make it and if you have a hard time of just removing them just stay focused remove that attachment that you have to them because a lot of things it's more of a mental and spiritual connection with the people in our lives. Like I have a lot of people in my life that I'm not connected to spiritually or I'm not connected to emotionally, but they're still in my life. If that makes sense, like mom might not support your dream. She's going to have to be in your life as long as she respects you, but you can remove that emotional. You can remove that attachment so that you're not affected emotional by the things that she say or the things that dad say or the things that cousin may say or your best friend or whoever may say and that goes for like people that you feel like you can't really remove because some people grow up in a in an environment where it's really toxic and they feel like they can't get out first things first you have to detach emotionally so that you cannot allow them to you know um stop you stop you from chasing your dreams and sometimes it's not their intention to stop you from chasing your dreams they just don't understand or they don't agree with it or it's not something they're used to or have any knowledge about so they just instantly turn away or don't agree with it and sometimes people turn around and they say hey you know what I see you're doing this I see this makes you happy and I'm gonna fall in line like I'm gonna go ahead and support you but until those people make those um, decisions to support you, you focus on the people, surround yourself with the people who do support you. And if you feel like you don't have any support, God supports you. God is there. Like, yeah, you don't see him, but in spirit, I'm telling you, he is there. The closer you get to him and you seek him, really those people who don't support you, they will not affect you as much if that makes sense. But, um, it's easier said than done because I've been there, you know, been there, done that, been around, unsupportive family unsupportive friend well I'm not going to say unsupportive family my family has always supported me but unsupportive friends definitely I have been there friends that are secretly jealous I have definitely been there that only want to talk to you when you have something bad going on I have definitely been there and it's crazy because like right now I'm going through like this transitioning where you know I'm coming out of a storm you know from like losing mom and stuff And it was like, everyone wanted to know my business. And it's like, now that I'm healing and now that I'm just on my A game and now that everything is just flowing and the blessings are coming in, I don't really hear those same people that was just all in my business. They just wanted to know the negative things that was going on in my life. And now that my life is good, they're nowhere to be found. Sometimes you have those people who are not really supportive of the process or supportive of your dream. They're just trying to see if you're going to make it. They're just trying, they want to know the gossip or the tea, but guess what, honey, what is tea to you is my testimony. And it's going to, you know, I'm going to be able to tell the world my testimony, but it may be tea to you. Something small. It's okay. Talk, let them talk. I'm telling you, let the, the people who talk and want to see you down, 
they're not the only reason they want to see you down is because they're below you. Anybody that is doing better than you is trying to pull you and to encourage you and want to see you do better. If they're talking about you and they're hating on you, they're below you. Leave them where they're at, at the bottom. Okay? Okay. And also, just walking into a new season, like, I feel like it's important to just get closer to God right now. You know, times are getting crazy, crazy, crazy right now. Like, really crazy. And we need God in everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. You don't know what to wear. You would ask God. I'm telling you, you don't know if you want to go to the mall today or you don't know if you want to go to church today or if you don't know if you want to get this job or that job or talk to this person, especially when it comes to relationships. Okay. We're going to, let's talk about that real quick. You can get in a relationship with the wrong person and you can go through so much tragedy, so much traumatic like so much trauma, you can go through so much if you enter into the wrong relationship, okay? So it's important to seek God when it comes to being with a woman, when it comes to being with a man, right? And my fellas, if your woman is out here supporting Sexy Red, you better run. If she is out here talking about some WAP, you better run, okay? You don't need that type of woman because eventually you're going to want to make her a wife. You're going to want her to have your children, right? Y'all better read between the lines. And women, you want a man, you better stop looking at these men that's supporting future and supporting all these men that are um, having all these babies by all these women. First of all, a man who is out here just putting his seed in everything that moves and breathes is not practicing high value is not practicing it at all because what you're telling me is you're okay with getting all these women pregnant and creating all these broken homes no and that's what the government wants they want broken homes you know well, I'm not gonna say the government wants that I don't really know what they want but you don't want to keep creating broken homes and broken families by having children with multiple different women and you're not with the, you're not with the one woman and just creating a family and an empire. No, because that child is affected. Now their father is not growing up in the household and it's a higher chance that the woman is going to be with another man and they're raised by another man, which the man might be better. But it's the fact that you as the father are not present. It's important that children grow up with their father in the house. Like that's why it's important. We make That's why it's important. We make, rational decisions about who we are with who we have children by i'm telling you and i'm speaking to myself not just you know i'm not this is not a preaching session anything i talk about is either i've seen it happen with my own eyes or i've lived it right and i've been there i've been there where i made a rational decision i was with a person i knew i did not need to be with i had a child with them and you know god was just like well you you laid in this bed, you knew what this person was like, you know, and you hear all the consequences from it, you know? So all you can do, if you, if I'm talking and you're listening, if you have made that mistake, but having a child with someone that you know is not fit to be a parent or they're just, it's just not working out, you know what you need to do. You do as much as you can to support that child. Emotional needs, spiritual needs, getting them close to God financial needs you do what you can to you can do you let the other the other parent will pay the price the other parent will you know they're gonna have to answer to the child one day but you do what you only you can do right then you just protect your child as much as you can but yes we need to be smart about who we're in a relationship with who we're marrying now because it's really important and it shapes our future like everyone is supporting all these sexy reds and wops and cardi b's and all this don't get me wrong like i used to be a cardi b fan you know but she's been coming out with all this extra stuff talking about she don't she don't cook she don't clean how you think i got this ring how y'all think she got this ring she's talking about her walk she's saying she got the ring because of down there right because of down there you telling me eh, I'm not even trying to speak on people's relationship, but if that's the only way you got a ring, then I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be hard for a man to go do what he wants to do. Especially if you're telling the world that you don't cook or clean. You're a woman. 
We're supposed to cook and we're supposed to clean. And you're telling the world that it's okay. No, that is not okay. And women should not be glorifying that behavior. We are, we are, we were made on this earth to be the nurturers, to cook, to clean, to have children, to be feminine, to be in our soft girl era, to be in our soft woman energy. Cause we are Queens. We handle ourselves such. So if you're not cooking and cleaning, who's cooking and cleaning him or the kids doing, or you just went and bought a chef or you went and bought a maid. That's, that's pretty lazy to me. I don't know. I mean, if you got the money for it, go ahead, but we're not going to sit here and glorify that behavior because like middle-class people, you know, like our regular work, hardworking women out here, stay at home moms or working women that are out here in the field as myself, we're still coming home. We're still cooking. We're still cleaning. You know, I worked and I still cook. I still clean. I have kids to take care of. Right. So it's important that we seek God. We join a church when it comes to who we're dating. We just pray that they're the woman or man who um, reflects what God says a man or a woman should be. Because if not, you're going to go through so many problems with that person. Think about it. Like, oh, he got the best shoes. He got the best car. Okay, but what does he offer? What does he do? You know, what substance, what values does he have? What morals, ladies? Like, come on. And ladies, we, you, you know, I see some of y'all bashing men on social media. We're not doing that walking into our new season, okay? The new season is about you. You want a good man? You want a high-value man? You become that high-value woman to attract that high-value man. And don't get me wrong, they're going to be low-value men. And when I say high value man. I'm not speak I'm not saying that his value is high or his value is low cuz everyone is worthy, right? Everyone is worthy, but I'm talking about the behavior that you're displaying. So when it comes to bashing these men, no, you be the woman that you're supposed to be so that you can attract that type of man. Because I see it all the time, the women are bashing this man and I look at them and I'm like, "But lady, look at you. Like, what man will respect you? No offense." But if you carry yourself and you're out here having sex with whoever, drinking, partying, being trashy and not being a woman, not being a lady and carrying yourself in the right way, you're going to attract those low energy people who, who want that type of woman. You're being the woman that those type of men want. Men who put themselves at a higher standard, who have morals, who have values, who's not sleeping around, who believes in saving themselves for the right woman and not just giving themselves just because you look cute. You know, those men who have boundaries, you right, who have a career, who are, who, you know, who want something in life. They're going to act a certain way and they're going to want their woman to act a certain way. So that means they're not going to just go for any type of woman. You are what you attract. And... Sometimes we, you know, high value women will attract, you know, a man that's not doing right, but they will try to shoot their shot. But this season we're cutting all that out. Okay, ladies, we're not, we're not doing that. We're not. And fellas, we're not doing the thing where we sit here and we bash a woman either. Because while y'all are bashing women, the women who are good for you are going to see that and run away from you because no good woman wants a man who bashes a woman no we want a man who um who lifts women up who's not afraid to lift a woman up I see so many times men are so comfortable putting women other men are so comfortable putting other women down really it's an insecurity thing in my opinion but that's what we're not doing this new season we're treating each other respectfully we're focusing ourselves this new season we're Handling ourselves accordingly, women and ladylike men, y'all are handling, handling yourselves great, taking care of your responsibilities, right? Because that's what we are all supposed to do. Take care of responsibilities, focus on the positive, focus on the love, focus on the people that are good for us. Pray for the ones that we want to see their lives change. There's so many people around us, we want to see them better that may not be making the best decisions right now. Continue praying for them, continue hoping for them, but also have those boundaries up so that you can protect yourself in this season. 
and that you can have a prosperous season, a winning season, right? We are walking into our winning season, right? So when you finish listening to this, I want you to go into the mirror and repeat this. I am walking into my winning season. I'm walking into my winning season. Okay, so we're going to handle ourselves accordingly in this winning season. And if you might have a slip up, it's okay. Stand back up and keep on moving, okay? It's okay to cry. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to smile. It's okay to frown. It's okay. Thank you for listening to The Way of the Millennial Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at The Way of the Millennial and on Instagram at The Way of the Millennial underscore podcast. Remember, I love you, but God loves you more. Thank you.